PR's top pros talk integrating earned media with paid media, featuring Michael Roth, owner and managing partner of The Bliss Group. And here's your host, Doug Simon. Michael, you voiced some pretty strong opinions about the need to combine both earned outreach for clients with paid. I mean, what would you call it if an agency is only capable of doing one or the other? Well, up until recently, Doug, I, I would have said that, that, you know, an expertise with earned and then, um, you know, uh, allowing our clients to seek paid elsewhere um, was, was just fine with us. And, and when you have that, when you view communications through that kind of lens, I think it, it, actually, uh, it, it actually creates a disservice for, for your, your clients. There seems to be um, a focus, rightly so, on public relations agencies that offer earned and thought leadership and will go there and maybe cross over a little bit into, uh, in, into paid opportunities. But um, what, what I've seen, especially recently with working with Johns Hopkins and, and the T- Department of Defense in our work in, in COVID, is that to get highly targeted, uh, targeted and to provide a real integrated experience um, and to delve deep into, uh, into your audiences, you need both earned and paid. Um, Great. So let's dive into yeah. that a little sure. deeper if we could, because one of the questions, and I have one point of view, but it shows about here and your point of view as well. Do you think the paid that you do, do you have to start with sort of an earned mentality as in what content would be good enough that people would choose to air it if they were producers or would choose to watch it? Is that the mentality or is paid completely different? So is there some benefit from having sort of a PR approach as opposed to we're just going to buy and make sure people see it? Yeah, so I, I think, you know, client first, right? And their, their objectives and their strategies first, and you work with them to decide. In the case that I mentioned before with John, Johns Hopkins and the Department of Defense, we were looking to get people educated on convalescent plasma and teach them about it and have them go ahead and enroll in, 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 a, uh, in a clinical trial. So uh, how do we do that? We can certainly work with, uh, with, with, with local news, which we do all the time, and we can work with, with healthcare outlets. But the, the fact of the matter is these days, a lot of people, you know, won't see that, and, but they will see Facebook, Google, LinkedIn right. kind of ads. And I think it's our job to use a combination of the two. So yes, we use the earned lens where we think about thought leadership and education, but sometimes when we want to get hyper-focused on, on certain audiences, we need the combination of both. Yeah. Do you think the pendulum is sometimes swung too far where it's like a pure digital and sort of giving up on the earned mindset? Is that as much of a risk? I do. I think it's a big risk. Um, I, I think that um, you do need uh, the imprimatur and the, the trust of a third party, right, of the reporter. People follow certain news, news outlets and they trust their guidance so if you work with them versus you know just just coming in with with paid content, you you get their angle and their skew on it, and I think that that is important. Sometimes it's additive when you least expect it. Yeah, no, that's an interesting thing, and a key part of that is the value of strategic alliances. And I know you're going to give us some great pointers on what makes a strategic alliance work and what yeah. makes it fail, because if you're not one of the major, major firms with the ability to have everything under one roof or under the multiple roofs that are owned by an umbrella organization, you might not be able to do everything. So how do you seek out the right strategic alliance first? And then we'll talk about how you can make well, it work. It's, it's a great question. And at Bliss, we are fortunate. Um, it, it, we've been a privately owned firm for 46 years now. Um, this year, myself and another junior partner, Courtney Stapleton, joined in with Bob Pearson, who is chair of the Next Practice Group, which is a collective of founder-driven firms. And they offered a lot of things that we didn't offer that at first we were like, I'm not sure that we really need that. And then I started to learn as an earned uh, agency. And then I started to learn, you know what? Expertise in uh, all kinds of areas are are, are additive that we didn't have, for instance, you know, uh, 
Net Security is a group that that we use for cybersecurity issues. We use paid. We use you know we used to outsource um, SEO. We no longer do that. So we have strategic alliances, and I have to say, um, analytics is part and parcel of everything mm-hmm. that we do. And I think every integrated group must do that. And I I think that um, having that in our partnership is essential. And we've actually brought that internally and created a, a sub practice of analytics within. So you, through these strategic alliances, you learn to open up and offer more again for the client. Yeah, and one of my staffers had drafted up a note noting that you were previously a lawyer and how that might <laughs> affect you. But I think we should point out you were not disbarred. You still remain a law as a function of, of <laughs> what am, you're practicing. I'm retired. I, I actually but, never I actually never practiced, but I'm a member of the New York, New Jersey bars. And I went to the law school. I did great. I was on law review. Um, but I realized um, it wasn't for me. What The reason why I went to law school, actually, I was very much right-brained. I'm a musician and more of a writer and an artist, and um, and I needed to balance that out with some analytical thinking. Um, and I found law uh, to be challenging. I was a paralegal for a little while while I was being a musician, and uh, I, it's really been been helpful. In the beginning, when I started in PR, I was working predominantly on uh, regulatory issues and mm, things okay. that thought I was suited for. But really, I loved. Um, science. I fell in love with healthcare and science. And, and that's where, that's where I went. But I will say that, you know, there are a couple of lawyers that I know in healthcare communications, and they're all very good. They're all, they come, they, they approach communications with a slightly different lens. So I think it's helpful. There's, I think more of a focus on the business overall, rather than just the communications aspect of the business. Yeah, I don't know if I get any of that benefit from being pre-law at Michigan. And then when I received the applications, and one of them was interested, said, why do you want to go to law school? Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if I have a good answer for why I yeah. want to go to law school. So I don't why think I had a good answer either, put this time and all this money and decided not to, which was an interesting take. I guess you got yeah. the benefit of the degree, and I, I, I would have made law review if I went. So that's an issue. But this is really good. I, I so when alliances can go wrong, because that's a challenge too, yes. how do you make sure they work? What are some problems to really look at if you're planning to work with a partner? I think that'll really be something of benefit to lots of members of our audience. Well, yeah, I, um, so so it, it's, it's, it's a multifaceted question. It's, it's not only cultural because you're used to your own agency and the way you do things, but when you're working with people, let's say in a more technical, uh, in, in more technical group, they may uh, they may use terms differently than you use. Mm-hmm. And it, it's really like a, a meeting of the minds issue. And it's critical that you communicate. And it's also critical. Yeah, yeah. That's why I think uh, Next Practice Group and Bliss work so well as part and parcel of one another because we meet all the time outside, socially. We're like, we're, we're tied together in, in many ways. So we get to know each other as people and it's, it's hard to offer something to your clients and trust in what you're offering without really knowing the people providing all the services. It's a very nice, neat place to just offer earned because you know each other and, right. and you, you have the same mindset. But in order to, to really be an integrated agency, you need, to, you need to really understand one another. So I would say over communication is the yeah. key to that. Yeah. And I think transparency as well, especially if something That's isn't right. going smoothly, because from an education point, you really then learn, OK, how should you maybe approach it differently? Because you are presenting different things to the clients. That's that correct. You're with. Yeah. Yeah. Go, oh, ahead. go ahead. I was going to ask if you want to leave the audience with some final thoughts. And, you know, of course, congratulations on your success. Well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, this year has been revolutionary. Bliss has been on built. Uh, from a, a small firm, when I came, we were about half the size, actually. I came about eight years ago to build a healthcare practice in Bliss. And I, I've learned from Meg Weldrick and Elizabeth Sass now um, uh, so much. And and I think that um, what, what we're building now is something transformative. We're looking for what's next for our clients. Um, and uh, we've really uh, evolved and we've really moved away from from the PR and communications of old, 
we're, we're just expanding out and exploring together. And um, I, I would just say like, you know, to, to other professionals, you know, continue to continue to expand out, right? Don't get too comfortable because business keeps moving forward and uh, yeah. you've got to be one step ahead of your clients. Yeah, and one thing the pandemic has done is really increase the speed of that change. Thanks so much for being with us and sharing your ideas. Yeah, thank you, Doug. Appreciate being here.